All right, let's talk about warming up. So if you've loaded up the workouts, you're gonna see there's no prescribed lengthy dynamic warm up with a million activation exercises, mobility exercises, because at the end of the day, the best way to activate, to warm up, to mobilize before you do a set of let's say squats is to do light squats. And so we're gonna talk about how I want you guys to warm up. It's called a pyramid style warm up. We're gonna talk about what that is. We're gonna talk about why we're doing it. And we're gonna talk about how to apply it to the rest of your workout. Do you need this many warm ups? That's for everything. What about isolation exercises? What about stuff at the end of the workout? Does it change? And so stick around for that. It's gonna be important because I do want you guys doing some sort of a warm up for everything that you do. And so what is a pyramid style warm up? It's pretty simple. You're gonna see an example of me warming up for a working set of 185 pound back squats. And a pyramid style warm up means starting with higher reps with very low loads and moving the load upward as the reps go down as we get closer to our working weight. So again, we're starting with light loads for a lot of reps and then bringing the reps down as the load gets closer to our working weight. These sets are not supposed to be fatiguing. These sets are not supposed to be fatiguing. They are warm up sets. And so as you get closer to your working weight, the reps should go down, 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 because you're not actually supposed to be getting fatigued. So why are we doing it this way? Well, there's three reasons that you warm up in general. The first would be to actually warm up the joints, the muscles, the connective tissue that you're gonna be using in the exercise, the. The second reason is to actually go through the mental cues that you'll need, that you need to remind yourself for in the squat. So it's like, you know, taking a couple golf swings before stepping up to the tee, you'll kind of want to go over the motions. And so for a squat, you might be going through the cues in your head of like, hey, drive the knees forward, don't fall into posterior tilt, keep the chin relatively tucked, all of that good stuff. And that's going to give you a chance to practice the movement in going into your working sets. And the third would be something called activation potentiation, which is just potentiating the nervous system, which again is both just fancy for getting your body ready to move the load effectively. If you did a set of 15 bodyweight squats and then slapped on 185 and decided to just go at it, you would perform worse, let alone potentially uh, more injurious that way, but you would perform worse because your body has not been exposed to anything even near that load. It's not ready to move that load as effectively as if you had incrementally worked up to that load. Um, so we are going to watch me warming up for back squats. You will see that I have five warm up sets before my set. Now, you probably don't need five warm up sets before everything. Well, actually, you definitely don't. But you will see that exercises in earlier in the session, exercises where you're moving heavier loads, exercises that are more complex from a movement pattern perspective, you know, uh, a free weight movement versus a machine movement, a back squat versus a bicep curl. You probably are going to need more warm up sets for stuff where you're moving heavier load, that it's a little bit more neurologically complex uh, than you will for isolation exercises or machine work. Now, you're gonna warm up for everything. And so I am expecting that you're doing at least one or two warm up sets for everything and potentially more for stuff like back squats or RDLs or leg presses where you're actually moving quite a bit of load. So let's jump into this example. It's sped up, so obviously ignore the tempo. We're gonna start with 15 reps at body weight. I just walked into the gym, just looking to, to warm up, loosen up, and get my pat motor patterns ingrained here. Then we're gonna grab the bar. And so the, the reps went from 15 down to eight because we grabbed a little bit of load. Next, we're gonna put 25 on each side, up to 95 pounds for a set of six. So the load went up, the reps went down. Again, none of these sets are supposed to be hard. It's about exposing your body to heavier load as you get closer to that working weight. Then we went up to 135 for a set of four. And then last, I did a single rep with my working weight. And again, you could probably get by with going from the 135 set right into the 185, right into your working set, but I really like doing a single with my working weight. I don't want the first time my body is exposed to a load to be the time where I need to perform. And so if you're doing a really heavy set of back squats or RDLs or hip thrusts or glute bridges or leg presses, you might want to expose your body to the actual load that it's going to have to do for a working set prior to that working set. Um, and so you saw I went from body weight to, to the bar to 95 to 135 to 185 and then we rest and then we go into our working set with 185. Um, now, how long should you be resting between these warmups? Something like 30 to 60 seconds is fine. You can rest a little bit longer as you get as the weights get heavier, but I think about 60 seconds is fine. After this last warm-up set prior to your first working set, you probably want to rest a little bit longer, like north of two minutes, to really get your body back to baseline, get ready to crush it for that first set. So 30 to 60 seconds in between warm-ups, two minutes plus between that last warm-up and that first working set. Now, do you need this many warm-ups for every exercise? Again, you don't. I'm expecting that you're doing at least one or two warm-ups for everything. I do not want you jumping into anything cold, even bicep curls or lateral raises or tricep extensions or calf raises. I do want you doing at least one or two warm-up sets. Again, if the exercise is earlier in the workout, 
if it is more neurologically complex, meaning if the movement pattern is complex, like a movement pattern that's not complex is a leg extension. A movement pattern that is complex is a back squat. It's way more complicated, way more moving parts, right? More moving joints, more things to think about. I want you warming up more for those movements. If you're using a lot of load, I want you to be warming up more. Uh, if you're doing any form of a deadlift, if you're doing a hip, a hip thrust or a glute bridge or a back squat or a leg press, stuff that you're moving a lot of load, I'm gonna want you to move there incrementally. I don't want you to sit down in the leg press, put no plates on, do a warm up set, and then slap six plates on each side and then get going. I want you to get there incrementally. It will help you from a performance standpoint, from an anti-injury standpoint, um, and overall from a, a, from a benefits standpoint. So, hope that makes sense, guys. If you have any questions, ask it in the group. Looking forward to seeing you in there.